Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the website Order Sync. In this week's training, I'm going to show you how to create this incredible dynamic dashboard complete with fully synced data from your website. And if that wasn't enough, I'm going to show you how you can create your own e-commerce website while I create one for you right in front of you every step of the way. It's going to be an incredible training. I cannot wait. So let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I've got a really terrific training for you this week. We're going to be creating this incredible dashboard, live dashboard, of course, with slices and a whole lot going on. Of course, at Excel for Freelancers, we go way beyond that. Instead of just starting with a set of data, which, of course, we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to get that data in Excel. We've got products, we've got order items. And how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to show you how you can automatically sync your website data orders inside Excel and have that display in orders and in a dashboard. And of course, I'm going even beyond that this week. I'm going to show you how you can create your own e-commerce website. Looks very much like this. We're going to create it live right in front of your eyes. It's going to be a fully functional e-commerce. You're going to be able to shop. You'll be able to add items to a shopping cart simply by that. You'll be able to check out and those orders are automatically going to come into Excel very easily. It's going to be an incredible training. So I want you to stick with us through the whole thing. I hope you do like these of course, trainings. I bring them to you each and every Tuesday. And of course, all I ask is just a few things. If you can go ahead and comment below, let me know your thoughts, ideas, feedback. Of course, that's great. And of course, I always want to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and click that notification icon bell. This training is absolutely free. Of course, so is the template. All you need to do is enter your email and your name in the links down below. And we'll get that over to you either with your email or with your Facebook Messenger. It's a great training, absolutely free. Of course, if you do like these trainings and you want to go beyond that, I've got the incredible mentorship program available to you where we go beyond this inside the program. We build out dashboards, we build out websites, and I show you how you can create your own Excel based application for passive income. I take you through 12 phases of this incredible mentorship program so that you can turn your Excel skills and your Excel passion into actual profits, recurring income. I show you that in a 12 phase program and that's through our mentorship program. You can reach that through myexcelmentor.com, myexcelmentor.com, or click the links down below and I'll show you everything you need to do to get your career going with Excel and have a passive income. I also wanted to take a moment to say thank you. This is actually our 250th training video. We've been at it for almost five years. So I want to say thank you very much. It's an incredible achievement. So I really appreciate it. And I could not do it without you. Thank you for your continued support, likes, subscriptions, purchases, course enrollments, and everything else. It's been an incredible ride. And I hope to make it another 10 or 15 years or maybe a thousand videos. It's going to be an excellent journey we're on together. To celebrate, of course, we are going to have a 250 workbook pack that's coming up very shortly. So I just want to take a moment to say thanks so much for your continued support. 250 training videos. Amazing. Thanks so much. All right, let's get started on this training. We'll go over an overview. Then we're going to get right into it. I've got this uh, really, really cool, very awesome dashboard here that we're going to be going through. And of course, we've got slicers and it's going to tell us about our product sales from years beyond. We've also got a small admin section, just some basic information there, a data folder where the data is in our project picture. We've got a list of, we got to want to be able to add orders, right? If I want to uh, decide I want to add orders. I can do that. I've got to put in an order date 685. That's an order number. And then we can also load the orders 1185. That's an order here. So we can also load orders. Now what this is, is those are actually orders that have been ordered from the internet, but we can order any. If I want to select on any order, I can just select on order and view that order. It's going to load that order in. Those orders are going to come automatically from the website. We can then update the orders, save it as a PDF or print the order. So we've got a lot of details in there. We're going to be able to do that. And also, I want to have order items. What are all the order items that have been purchased? That's going to come directly from our website. We've got some pivot data and we've got a list of products. OK, so we're going to go over every single step. OK, once we get the data in here, we're going to create this really incredible dashboard. I'm going to show you everything. So make sure you get your beverage of choice, coffee. In this case, we're going to build a coffee website. It's going to be really, really cool. So how are we going to do that? We're going to start with the website because that's where it starts from. Orders are going to then be automatically brought into Excel, all that data. And then from there, we can also 
uh, display that order or we can display it in the dashboard just as we want to. How are we going to do that? Well, of course, we got to start out with the website. I've, obviously, I want to teach you as much as possible. And you think, well, Randy, this is we're teaching Excel. Why are we learning websites? I just think that learning how to create websites is the found, foundational skill. And I think it's really important. You don't have to be an expert. I'm not an expert. But it's really, really important to be able to edit, update, and create income for yourself, whether you're selling products, whether you're selling Excel, whether you're selling whatever you're selling, or you're selling your services, right? Creating that website is pivotal. And I'm gonna show you just how we do that. Create this really cool website. We're gonna be doing it all from scratch. I'm gonna show you how to create a brand new every step of the way. This website's gonna be built in WordPress. And we're gonna use a host called SiteGround. If you have your own host, great. You can build a WordPress. If you don't, SiteGround can up from just $3.99 a month. I'll include an affiliate link down below that will help us out just a little bit, although we don't get much, a few free days of service. But I really like SiteGround. Their services are great. Um, chat is good if you have any problems and uh, they got really inexpensive plans starting at just $3.99 a month. So once you do get signed up on SiteGround or any of your hosts, what you want to do is you want to go into your panel. Now your panel, if you're not on SiteGround, it'll of course look very different, but there should be somewhere where you can create a brand new website. Now you can create, of course, you can actually create your own domain basically by registering a domain whatever domain you want whatever host you're using will allow you to do that so if i click on new website inside siteground it's going to ask me do i have an existing domain a new domain maybe i want to register a brand new domain if it's available or maybe i've already registered a domain and i want to use an existing or i want to use a temporary domain for the training purposes we're going to use a temporary domain okay but of course if you have a domain you would just set one of these now keep in mind that every host is different but basically what you want to do is you want to set up a basic WordPress site so you're looking for that right I and mean, it's almost every single host will show you how to create a basic WordPress site okay so I'm gonna do I'm gonna select a temporary domain and it's gonna assign me this domain here which is fine and I'm gonna continue on that and then what I'm going to do is I want to say to start a new website or migrate an existing I'm gonna start a brand new website because I'm gonna take you every step and now we are going to be using WooCommerce and WordPress but I would like to take that we uh, go a different route. So we're just going to start with a very basic WordPress and then we're going to build it out. So I'm going to click select. Basically, I'm just adding WordPress. You will then enter your email and your password and then you'll just click continue. And then what it's going to do, it's going to ask you, in this case, SiteGround wants us to add a site scanner. That's not necessary. So we'll just click finish. Okay, great. And now it's creating our website in just a few minutes. Okay, great. Once it's complete, you'll see that we have everything is complete. We can go to the site tools. We can go to the WordPress admin or we can view the website. Let's go ahead and take a look at the website and see what it looks like. It's just your basic WordPress website. It's basically just like this. We've got a WordPress. We've got a sample page. It's nothing much here, but that's okay. And what we want to do, first thing is be able to log in. So what we're going to do is you're going to use backslash and then log in. And let that log in. It'll give you that login sign. Put in your email and your password. And it's going to look something like like this so we'll then just click login and it's going to log you into the back end of this wordpress site and if you're using siteground right you'll get something like this. this is something that they put on but what we're going to do is we're going to skip this little starter this that siteground puts on we're just going to exit out that we don't need that because you've got me here to train you so no worries on that so we don't need that in fact we're going to be removing that little starter plugin so this is the back end of your wordpress you've got your dashboard your home if there's any updates posts or things that you would post like really like articles that you might want to post media is where all of your library of pictures if we take a look at this it's going to be empty you've got no media there Pages or pages or permanent pages, any kind of page that you might want on. You have a sample page. And then what well, we have comments, if you're going to be, people are going to be commenting on your post. Appearance, we're going to focus on themes. Plugins are things that you can add into the website. And we're going to be adding a few and there'll be a few automatically. And in fact, there's already some installed and we want to remove those. So SiteGround put these three, I'm going to remove those. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is deactivate them. So we're going to deactivate and click apply. Okay, and once they're deactivated, all we need to do is then select all again and then just delete and then click apply. And that's going to delete those existing plugins. Be careful that, you know, when you do this on the website, you wouldn't normally do this deleting all your plugins. But when you have a brand new, I just want to start out with no plugins okay so next up we're going to focus on the appearance now we want a theme a theme there's a really great theme that i love and it comes with three themes these are the three themes and you can remove these once we get our other installed so i'm going to click add new i want a brand new theme and i want something called astra astra is one of the best that i use 
And here's the theme. And then what we're doing is we're just going to click install. And it's going to take just a moment to install it. Once it's completed, then we'll go ahead and activate it. Now that it's installed, we can just click activate it. And that's going to activate this theme. And I really like this theme because it comes with templates. And it's called starter templates here. And you'll see this up here. Now you can click here to get that starter template. I'm just going to go another route here. So I want to show you how we do that. Now starter templates is one of the, it's a plugin that works with Astra. So we're going to go to plugins. We're going to call add new. Okay, so we want to install a plugin that's going to help us create a really quick template. So here we all we just need to type is an Astra, right? It's called the, the plugin is called Astra Starter Template. So let's type in here Astra. And then what we're going to be doing, and we'll find it should be the first thing one starter templates. It works with page builders, Elementor, WordPress, Beaver Builder. So we're going to click install now. That's the starter template I want. That's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, right? That's going to get us our basic format of the website. And then we're just going to click activate. And what that's going to do is it's going to help us understand exactly what type of website we want. And we want an e-commerce website. And it's going to give us some templates to start out on so we don't have to recreate everything. And it's going to say C library. So that's what you want to do. So also in the appearance here, starter templates the same the same way you know it's the same library so either way either way it's going to get you there going to get started we'll skip this guy's video build our website now we're going to be using a page builder called elementor this will install it for us but we want to click elementor it's a great uh, we'll be showing you a little bit more about it but so these starter templates some of them use elementor so what we want to do is we want to create here's all the different types now let's uh, filter that out. We only want to focus on e-commerce, right? I want to create an e-commerce website. And we'll take a look in here. And this is the one my favorite here, this organic store. This looks really good. Some of them are paid. Notice some of them are paid and some of them are free. But we're going to start with this free one here. So I'm going to click organic store. And right away it's going to ask us for a logo. I've already created a logo. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to upload the file. So I'm going to select a file because I created a logo for this website already. And I'll just select it and I'll browse for it. It's called Fredder's Coffee, of course. Fredder's got a brand new coffee shop now. Imagine that. And I'm going to click Select. Okay, so what that's going to do is install a logo. Now you see the logos up here. We can change the size of it a little bit. I'll just make it a little bit bigger before it increases the height of that top banner. Okay, so now we're going to click Continue. Okay, we can also change the theme. We can different change different colors if we want. But let's stick with the original colors here. And then I'm going to scroll down here. We can also change the fonts, right? If we change the fonts, we can revert back to the original font here. The original is fine for me. And I'm going to click continue. And then it's going to ask us for some information. We can skip that. We don't need that. And I'm just going to click submit and build my website. And the rest, it's just going to take a few minutes to automatically install everything you need for this particular template. In my test, almost every single time it said uh, something went wrong. So all we need to do is just try again. And the next time it'll take all of it, right? So the, each time it, it was very quick and then all of a sudden it got updated very quickly the second time around. So you might need to do that more than once. And our second attempt, 100%, we are good to go. And our website. Now let's click and view the website. Let's take a look at our website and see what we have. Wow, very, very cool. You see how quick that was? To, we got it now. We've got products, which we're going to be removing. We're going to be customizing this for our own products, right? We've got uh, all products, got a little contact, and we've got a fully functional e commerce website. Of course, we need to focus on our own products. So that's just what we're going to do with the products. Okay, so we see we've got it. We've got a brand new website here and uh, everything's set. So let's go ahead and take a look inside and let's start customizing this for our requirements. So we're gonna click on the dashboard here. I wanna make a few changes here. Let's first of all give this a name so we can go into a few different ways. I'm gonna go into settings and general. And I wanna make sure to give this name. So I don't want, I don't want my WordPress. We're gonna call this Fredder's, of course it's gonna be Fredder's, Fredder's Coffee. And let's just put in tagline, the best coffee in the world. See, I was already working on that. Okay, great, everything else is okay. We're okay with it, with, with the way we have everything else. We can set days and times. That's not so important for our purposes today. I'm gonna to save those changes. I also, if you notice this little up at the top, you see this little WordPress icon. I don't really want that, I want my own icon it's called fav ico a fave icon and i want to customize that okay so i want to i want to customize that because i don't want that wordpress so i'm going to go into appearances and i'm going to click customize here and inside that customize what we're going to do is we're going to go into the site identity here so we're going to click here on site identity here all the way down here and then what i'm going to do is i want to click that icon so clicking on here and then we set select site icon and i've got one here already so i'm going to upload a file and I'm going to select a file and I've got a site icon right about here. So take a look at this. You see that WordPress? So as soon as I open that and add it, 
and I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to make that update. We don't need to crop it or anything, so we're going to skip the cropping. It's good as it is. And I'm going to publish it. Now take a look, and that icon has already changed. Now I've got a little coffee. And we've got our name, Fred Fredder's Coffee. It's already set up. Very, very cool. So we've got that part. So let's go back in to the site identity, and uh, let's go back into, let's, let's exit out of there. And so what I want to do now is I want to start working on some products. Now, if we take a look back inside our, we have a list of products here. And I want these products, and I've got some pictures assigned to these project products. And if we saw previously, we've got a, no, we didn't see it, but that's okay. I've got a folder here full of product pictures, right? These product pictures inside this folder correspond to these product names here, right? So the picture name is there. So I've got a product ID, a name, a description, a category, a regular price, a sales price, and a picture. So I've got all that in Excel. So what I would like to do is I want to upload that into our website so that I can have all those pictures and all those project uh, those products set. So back inside our website, let's take a look inside our WooCommerce. Now this WooCommerce, notice we've got a lot of more plugins. Let's take a look inside. So the plugins, let's take a look at what we have now. All these plugins got added by our theme. So now we have CartFlows, Checkout plugins. We've got Elementor, which is our page builder, Starter Templates, which we added, and WooCommerce. WooCommerce is our e-commerce. That's going to help us actually make purchases, right? Okay, so we can skip the setup for this, and we can skip this setup, right? I'll be taking you through this, and we can dismiss this. So what we have here, let's go into So WooCommerce is going to help us with our orders. and things. Our products are all the products that we want to sell. So I'm going to click on All Products. And notice that we've got a bunch of products here that we don't want, right? We want our own products, right? So I don't want, I want to delete all of these products. So to do that, I'm just going to select all. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the trash and I'm going to click apply. Okay. That's going to create a new section called trash. Okay. So we want to click on trash. We don't need any of those products. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to boy action and I'm going to delete permanently and then click apply. Okay, great. Now let's take a quick look back inside our products. Now let's take a look. We've got some categories here, right? Our products, we have coffee machines, we have coffee, and we have coffee accessories, right? I would like to match that inside our WordPress website. I also want to have three categories. So back inside our WordPress website, let's take a look at categories. And we see this particular theme, this, this template has already three different categories, but those are not ones that I want. So let's edit these categories in order to have what we want. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click edit and then I'm just going to change this to coffee. Okay, so we notice I got some and we also need a slug. That's part of the URL. So we have we can only use certain characters, right? It's a URL friendly. So I'm just going to put in coffee in lowercase. Then what I'd like to do is I'd like to upload an image of that coffee. But I have a lot of images that I'm going to be uploading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click add or update images. And I'm going to click Upload Files. Now, I've got a lot of pictures, right? I might as well put them all in at the same time. So I want to add all of these product pictures right now, and then we'll use them. So I'm going to do a Control A, and I'm just going to drag this over right into here. And that's going to upload all of these pictures that we're going to need for all of our products and our product categories. And it's going to upload them all. So it'll take just a moment. Now that we have uploaded all our images, I want to select a specific image that I'm going to use for the category of coffee. So it's going to be this one. I'm going to use this one. That's what I want. So I've got a category called coffee and I've got an image associated with it and I'm going to click update. Great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to categories and I'm going to edit the other two. This one, groceries, obviously we don't want. So we're going to call this probably coffee machine. So I'm going to put in coffee. Let's do coffee machines. Okay. And I'm going to give it a slug also of coffee and then dash machines. And then I also want a, a picture associated with this category. So I'm going to click upload an image. We've already got it. I'm going to use this image right here and that's it. Okay. I'm going to click update. And now again, back to categories and we're going to update the last one. This one's juice. We don't want it as juice. We're going to use coffee accessories, right? Cause we have that. So that's our third one. So I'm going to select that. And of course we need a slug lowercase coffee accessories. And also I've got an uploaded image. I've got an image. I've got to use our Fredder's coffee cup already customized for you guys. And then we're going to update that. Okay. That's it for our categories. Good. Okay. Now we're going to update that. All right. That looks good. Let's go to categories. Let's check them all. We've got our coffee, coffee accessories, coffee machines. We have our slugs here. Everything looks good. Great. So we have that, but now what we want is products. So let's click on all products and you'll see we don't have any products at all, right? We deleted them, correct. So what I would like to do is I'd like to import it. It's gonna take a long time to create, if I click add new and create each product individually, I have to assign a name, a description, a price. It's gonna take a long time, right? But what's another way to do it? So let's click import, I wanna import them. 
So I'm going to click import. It says this tool allows you to import or merge product data for your store from a CSV or TXT. Well, that's great. Of course, our products are in an XLSM. Well, that's not really going to help us. But what we can do is we can create a CSV. So I'm just going to select all the data using control shift and then down arrow. And I'm going to copy this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new Excel. And I'm just going to paste it in right here. Okay, we just paste the values. That's fine. So pasting the values. So now what I'm going to do inside this, I'm going to save this as a CSV. So I'm going to do save as. And I'll just put it on my desktop somewhere where I know it's going to be found. My desktop's right here. Got kind of found that. There we go. So inside our desktop, I'm just going to call this product import. And I'll make sure to save it as a CSV file. So I'm going to click CSV. Okay, and I'm going to click save. Okay, so we can close that out. We're done with that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our website and we're going to choose that file that is now on our desktop. And we can select right here. Let's go ahead and put it up here on our desktop and just select that file that's here. It's called product import there. Click open. So now we've got that. So now what we're going to be doing, we can show some advanced, but we're not going to need it. It's if we can change the delimiter if we want, or we can enter a path if it's on our server already, we can do that. And then um, we got a maximum size. So we're going to click continue. And the next step is simply to and map those files. So I've got a product ID, the column name, and where do I want to map it? Inside the WooCommerce file. So I want to map it to ID. Name has already been mapped. Description's already been set. Category, there's something called categories. I want to set that up. So if we just browse here, we can find categories. Regular price, that's part of the price. So I'm going to select right here, regular price. Sales price is just that. I'm going to select here to sale price. And then the last one I want to import is a uh, picture. So we're going to find something called images and we're going to set that up. So that's right here, images. Okay, great. So everything has been mapped. And what we're going to do is I'm going to run the importer. It takes just a very pretty quick and it's going to import all the thousands. I think I've got about 29. Great. 29 products imported. Great. Now we can view the products. Perfect. So now we've got our pictures. Notice the picture names have matched up because I've matched the picture names. We've got our part number. We've got our pro regular price and our sale price. Our, it's already mapped to the categories. We don't have any tags, which we don't need. Cool. Very cool. So let's take a look inside. Now we're going to visit the site. And we're going to click on all products. Great. So now we've got all of our products set up. Why don't we customize the site a little bit more? We've got all of our products. So I'm going to go back to the home and I'd like to customize this, right? I don't want, obviously we don't want it this. So let's take a look. I'm going to edit with Elementor. I want to edit this page. I want to make some changes to this page. So let's go ahead and click on edit, edit with Elementor. That's the one I want to do, edit with Elementor. Elementor is the page builder that was also installed. And it's going to help us, of course, customize this page. So once we have that, we have it here. Okay, so now all we need to do is just click on things and make some changes. So I'm going to click on this. I don't want to show this picture. I want to change the picture. So I'm going to click here to choose an image. And I like, uh, let's choose this coffee. Let's say I want this one right about here. I like this one. Okay, so I've got a nice coffee image. I'm going to insert that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this navigator. That's just getting in our way. So we've got our coffee here. Now I'm just going to select this. I want to start changing the text. Let's call this best quality coffee. Let's call this best quality coffee. All right, and then we can call this join the fretters. Okay, we don't need join the movement, but maybe we can put something like join the fretters coffee movement or something like that. So let's say join fretters coffee today. I just want two lines. Okay, and we can put uh, something. We can change the text. Just highlight this and update that. And we'll make a few changes with that. Okay, get the best coffee and coffee equipment in the world with fretters. Very good, easy enough. Okay, I like that. And then let's see, best selling products. We probably don't need that. I'm just gonna delete this whole section using this X. That's gonna delete the whole section. I don't need that. Now, notice that we have three different categories, but here we you know, have three different pictures. So why don't we use our categories? If they want only coffee, they can click here. If they only want maybe coffee machines, click here. And if they only want maybe, let's say, coffee accessories, click here. So let's do that. Let's estimate that. Let's put in something like just uh, coffee, best coffee or something like that, or high quality coffee. We'll add the coffee and that might be the first one. So we'll put in, so all we need to do is just select on here. Of course, you can also select here too. So that's the same thing, high quality coffee. Either way, you know, either in the text or something. And then if it doesn't quite fit, right, you can put it, move it over a little bit more. If you like it, we can drag and drop. And we'll just put in something like the best coffee in the world. Very good, it is here at Fredders. I'll make each one two lines. And next up, we'll go with maybe coffee machines. So I'm gonna change this, highlighting this clearing that out and we'll just call this coffee machines okay so 
coffee machines. And then let's just put high quality, high quality coffee machines at low prices. I just want to make them all two line. And then the last one, we're going to put coffee accessories, coffee, and then let's see, accessories. Get all your coffee items and accessories here. Great, but now we got to change the pictures. Obviously those pictures are not going to help us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on this column and I'm going to go into style. And this is actually a background overlay. So there's no picture here, but there's a background overlay. And here's that limit. So I want to change that image. And I want to change it to, let's see, I don't forget what it was. That first one was high quality coffee. Okay, so high quality coffee, we'll use these standard beans. And I'm going to insert that. Okay, but that's much too big. Obviously, it's covering the text. So the first thing I want to do is go into the bottom center. And I want to change the size of it. I want to use a custom size so I can control the size. Okay, I want to put it about like that. Good, and I'm basically going to repeat those steps for both machines and for the accessories. So I'm going to click on here. Going into the style here, background overlay. And then we're going to change the image of that. And I'm going to put in this coffee machine. I'm going to insert that media. Again, doing the same thing, bottom center. And then also the size, custom size here. And then just going to reduce the size down a little bit so we can see just above that button. Okay. And then the last thing is the accessories. And we'll use our standard mug just as we had. We can also use dynamic content here. So background overlay. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to click here. And then we're going to look for this mug. That'll be our accessories. Same exact thing. Bottom center here. And then custom size. And then just bringing the size down a little bit. Okay, I like that. That looks really good. So everything's looking good. I'm going to click update. And of course, we can preview to see how it looks. If I click preview here. And we've got a little preview. We can see how it looks. It looks really good. We've got that. We still have to get the links working here because I want to make sure. And that's going to be sufficient for our purposes, at least for, for a while. That'll work just fine. Great. So, but what about these? I want to get, I want to be able to shop only those specific, or I want to be able to shop now. So let's go ahead and take a look. I want to go into our shop. So basically our shop is this one right here, all products, right? This is our shop. So all I want to be able to do is just copy that link here. And I want this link to, so if they click shop now, that's where I want them to go. So I'm going to click this one here, this little blue thing. And we need to link this button, right? This is a button. And there's a link here. So all I need to do is paste in that, right? That's where I want them to go when they click the shop now button. And there's a few others, not these. These are specific for categories. So we're going to change this up in a little bit. And then this one here, this is also a shop now in case they click here. I'm going to paste that in here. We're going to click update. Great. So now these are working. So this refresh. So when they click here now, it's automatically going to go to that shop button. Okay. So we click here and you see it goes perfect. We're going to go back to that home. And now what I would like to do is I want to get these links. When I click here, right, nothing's going to happen, right? Just going to go back to the home. But what I click there, I want to make sure it goes to only coffee. So how do we do that? Well, if we want to know that, let's go ahead and take a look inside our dashboard. And what I want to do is I want to go into those categories. So remember, we had WooCommerce and we had categories. We created those three categories, right? So if I see coffee and I click view, open in a new tab, right? It's going to give me a link. And that's exactly what I want. This is what I want. Product category and coffee. So it starts out with product and then coffee. And that will get us all only those products that are, have a category of coffee. That's exactly what I want. So but if I copy that link and I go into here and then we go back into, let's go back into that, that page again. So we can go, I guess we can update this one. We'll go into this one here, go into our home, edit with Elementor one more time. Okay. And then, oh, we had it open here. Sorry. So here's what I want to do. We can close this one. We don't need that one. Okay. Cause we have made it. So we're going to, here's the one with coffee. We're going to click here. This is the link that I want, right? Category coffee. This one's a little bit different. Remember, this one's coffee machine. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to paste in coffee, but then I'm going to backspace it and put that's machines. Okay. And then this one is going to be accessories. So I'm going to put this one here. Again, pasting that in here, dash, and then accessories. Then we've got all those links. I'm going to update that. Good. Now we, our preview is automatically updating here, our preview. It's automatically updated. So when I click shop now, let's open up in a new tab, right? And make sure it goes directly to the coffee. Perfect. When I right click here and go to a new tab here, it's going to go to all our coffee machines. That's exactly what I want. And we'll check the last one, open up in a new tab. Great. And now we're going to see coffee accessories. Okay, perfect. So 
all of our categories are working perfectly and now we can actually make a purchase on our site so we're ready to go so let's say we have coffee i'm going to click here i don't want to actually make a purchase i'm going to click let's say we want to purchase 10 of these i can click add to cart and maybe i want to purchase another coffee so i'm going to select down here and then maybe i want to purchase 15 of those and i'm going to click add to cart and you see this little button up here now we have 25 items in here we can view the cart or we can check out so let's view the cart and we see we've got a cart we can then remove items we can update quantities or we can check out but we're not quite ready to check out yet because we haven't added a payment option so let's go ahead and go back into our we're done with this update so i'm going to exit out of here so we're done we've already updated it i'm going to exit to the dashboard and we're going to take a look at one thing now to of course to check out we need to have a the way to payment okay so we can click exit out of here go back into the main one and to do that what we're going to do is go into woocommerce we're going to go into the home and we'll see some different things it'll tell you setup we, we want it we don't necessarily need this so we can skip this setup and store details and we can just click no on that and so what we have is we got some information in here it's just going to take us through steps if we want to do it so that's kind of a good idea when you want to set up for our purposes here we're just going to go straight into settings i want to focus on the payments now if you click on this tab under the woocommerce settings and then we're in payments right so what we want to do is we want to set up just a default payment now eventually you'll probably want to set up something like stripe credit card per payments or all pay or wherever your country has those I would use PayPal here, getting started with here and getting started here. However, for our purposes today, all we're going to allow is just something called cash on delivery. And that's going to help us make purchases right away because we have that COD, cash on delivery. Okay, so that's it. That's all we need to do is just to set up. It's automatically saved up. So when we go back into the settings again, we see that inside the payments, we already have COD selected. So now what we can do is we can actually make purchases on the site. So when we go back into the card here, and we click proceed to checkout we see that we have if we have a coupon we see that we have this pay with cash upon delivery we have that option when you have others paypal and stripe those will show up right here all we need to do is just enter a name so let's go ahead and put in some name here fred's wife is going to make some purchases and i'll put in a, any company name address and phone number it doesn't matter okay so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click place order and our order has been placed now i will get an email automatically so we see thank you for your order has been received cash on delivery we've got uh, coconut coffee we've got an order number here 5105 and also if we go into our account here my account here that's automatically been set up our order is automatically tracked in here we've got an order number we can view previous orders and me as an admin of course and the person who ordered are also going to get confirmation emails so let's take a look at what those might look like and as an admin i also received an order and that, that order looks something like this right so i've got a new order it says we've got a brand new order order 5105 has come in coconut coffee cash on delivery and then we've got some information of who purchased it under the billing address here so all of that is here and available so everything went through with our purchase great so we now have a fully functioning e-commerce website excellent but what i want to do is i want to get that information into excel i want to get all that order information into excel so how are we going to do that well we're going to use our friend integramat or now known as make that's going to help us do that if you do not have you can create a free account and the free account should work for our purposes too Today. so there's no problem with that because the free account allows us uh, at least two scenarios and 1,000 operations so if you have 1,000 more than 1,000 orders you could probably afford to pay for this okay great so what we want to do is basically I want to create some type of automation that when an order is placed the information will come directly into Excel so how are we going to do that well what I'd like to do is I would like to create a text file inside a specific folder and that folder i want excel to read that folder so we've had a specific data folder i want to look in a specific folder i want to look for a specific text file all that order information i want excel to read and i want to put that order information here under customer orders i want to put the actual order number here and i want to put all the items in order in another table here so all those order items would come here so separately they each are tied with an order number here so each one of them has the same order id except order items here have an order date product id the product name quantity that was ordered the amount the total 
the row on the order, that would be the row here. So if we have orders here, what row if we want to display it? 9, 10, or 11. So we can put that here. And I also want to show information. So if I want to load up, let's take a look at customer order. 5109 is an order. So I can just type in 5109 and have that order automatically displayed. Save it as a PDF, print it out, and I can also update. And on this button, update orders, I want any, of course, any text files that are in this folder, any sales that have come from our website, I want it to automatically, as many as there are, I want it to automatically come down here, right? So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that very, very easily with just a few different automations. And to help us with that, we're going to use Make or Integromat. Okay, so let's go to it and see how we're going to do that. Okay, so the best way to do that is to create a new scenario. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scenario. And one of the options is I want to start out, I want to get the information. I need a trigger. And that means when an order is placed on my website, something triggers and it's going to send that information to Dropbox. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to look for something called WooCommerce because WooCommerce has a plugin that's going to really help us for this. WooCommerce, if I spell it right. Okay. And then we can click here. So WooCommerce is what I want. And what are we looking for? There's many triggers. I want to watch an order. Triggers when a new order is created. That's exactly what I want. Okay, so we're going to click here. And now what we need to do is we need to connect our website with that. So I'm going to click Add, right? And I'm just going to click Fredder's Coffee Orders. Any name is fine. And once I have that, we need a consumer key. And we also need, it's certainly not going to be that, and we need a, uh, also a consumer secret. And we're going to get those directly from our website. Okay, so let's clear that out. So I need three things, a consumer key, a consumer secret and an eShop URL. And that's going to come directly from our website. So we're going to go back into our website here. We'll go into here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into WooCommerce settings here. Again, WooCommerce and settings. And I want to click on advanced. Okay. Once you're in advanced, I want to click on the REST API. This will help create that key for us. So we're going to click add a key. And we're just going to give it a description called new order. And then what we're going to do is get the user and we'll just add read and write. Okay, permissions. And we're going to generate an API key. That's going to generate that API key. I'm going to copy that API key here. And I'm going to place that directly inside here, this consumer key. Then I want a consumer secret. Okay, so what is that consumer secret? Will we show it just right in here? Let's close this out. Let's close this out. Okay. And it's right here. It's that secret right here. And then we'll paste that in here. Now it's looking for an eShop URL. So it's the main URL. The only difference is we haven't quite set this up as an HTTPS, but that's okay. So I'm going to copy this, just the original part. I'm going to paste it right here. However, I need to, it says HTTPS is required. So I want to make sure to put HTTPS here. Okay. So we've got our name, we've got our consumer key, we've got our secret, and we're going to click continue. Okay, and we're going to make sure that that con connects. Give it a moment and it should connect. Okay, it's connected, but I we don't want status, right? What is the status of that order? I want all orders, no, all orders, right? You can put um, refund cancel. So that means maybe you only want triggers for failed or refund. It's really cool. You can do all sorts of things, but we're going to do all, all orders. And we're going to set a limit. Maybe we'll put a limit to, uh, let's just say, 100. And so basically 100, it's fine. So that means however many orders happen, they're all going to come in and that's going to be fine too. Clicking OK. And then we'll, we don't want any past orders. So we're just going to click from now on is OK. So from now on, right, as soon as we do that, it's going to say, now we can turn that on, right? We can save, make sure to save our work. Let me give it a specific name. We'll just call this WooCommerce Orders. Okay, that's fine. So now we've given a name. We know it different. And then we, so what we want to do is I want to take this information, everything that comes through, and I want to bring it into Dropbox, into a text file. So we're going to click Add Another Module. And I'm going to click here. I'm going to search for another module and call it Dropbox, okay? Dropbox is something you'll want to connect. It'll ask you for your connection. And what we want to do is we want to create or overwrite a text file. Create or overwrite a text file. That's what we're looking for. Okay. So you'll have to add your own Dropbox connection. You'll take that step. And what I want to do is I want to overwrite a text file and I want to map the file path, right? Or map a file path. And I need to know what that file path is. So if we look down here, I've created a specific path already inside my Excel, right? We know that it's going to be this path right here called website sales, website sales. This is what I'm looking for. I have that already created inside the path. Let's pull that up and it's going to be right here. So it's called website sales. 
Now, all I, it's in my main Dropbox, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this here, and then I'm gonna go inside here, and I'm gonna paste it, but it's gonna start with a forward slash, keep that in mind, forward slash, not backslash, the folder, and another forward slash and then i want to give it a specific name i want to give it a unique name and here is the all the information that's going to come from this is everything about the order that's going to come directly from woocommerce so we've got the order id that's unique per order so i'm going to use that and then i'm going to end it dot txt because that's the type of file that we're creating okay great so now we have the file path and we have the file name but now what's inside that file well i want to put a lot of information in there first thing what i want to do is i want to put an order id but i also want to separate those so i'm going to separate those because we're going to add our own custom delimiter so we're going to use this one for now which is forward slash c forward slash so i'm going to copy that and then what else do i want i also want to know the date created but i don't want we have the date created right here but i want to format it very specifically so if i want to format it i'm going to click in here and then i'm going to look for something called format date which is here then inside the first part of it i'm going to actually put that date created so i'm going to put that variable here date created then i'm going to assign it a specific format so i'm going to use the capitals mm slash dd slash yyyy that's the format i want okay we're done with the date now what i want to do is i want to put in some information right so wh where am i going to what do i want to put i'm going to look in here look in the customer orders i want the order id I want the order date, I want the customer, but look, I want the customer combined. I want the first name and the last name in a single folder. I don't want to separate it. Then I want the address, city, state, zip, email. I want the payment type and I want the total. I want all of that to come in directly inside here. So let's put that inside there. So let's do that. So after our date created, then I'm going to want to put the first name. So I'm going to look down here, all the way down here and click billing first name. Then I'm gonna put a space, I don't want a separate column on that. Then I'm gonna put the last name. Now I have the billing first name and the billing last name and I have a space, notice there's a space between them. Now I'm gonna add a new column. And what do I want next? Well, I want the address. So let's go click the address here. And then what I want, another column. And then I want, of course, the city. So the billing city is gonna come next. Another column, then the state, another column, and then the postal code. Okay, then another column. So now after the postal code, what do I want? I want the billing email. So let's take a look at that and see if we can find it. It's right here, email. Okay, and then after the email, I want the total. So let's look down here. I want the total order number. So probably up here. Here it is right here. So clicking on total. Great, that's it for that. But what else do I want? I'm going to put, I also need all the items that were ordered, right? What else was ordered? So I'm going to put some information in here. I want to put a separator. In other words, I want to separate. Look, we have two different tables here. Let's take a quick look here. I've got all the customer orders here. And I've got a brand, another table for all the order items, right? We don't know how many order items. It could be one. It could be 10 per order. So that's going to go in another table, the order items. So we need to separate that. So I'm going to give it a very specific separation inside that so that I can tell. So I'm going to give it a, a forward slash. Then I'm going to call it order and then items and then another forward slash. Okay, so that way I can separate between the main order information and the order items. So now that I have that, but what, here's a problem. I'm gonna click okay, I'm gonna save that. It's here if we need it, right? So now the problem is here. Let's take a look at some of the information. Let's look inside here and uh, we can go here. So when I wanna add those order items, it's gonna come in something like this. So it's gonna call it line items and we don't know how many. So what we need to do is we need to loop through all of the order items, looping through them and create a single text that we can, that Excel can read. Cause we don't know if there's one or many. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to use something a little bit special and it's called iterator, iterator here, okay? Don't pronounce that very well. So iterator, I think that's how you pronounce it. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna iterate through all those line items so what are we going to do so what is that array that array that we're going to iterate through is here those line items here so all we need to do is click line items and click okay okay but once we've done that what we need to do is we need to combine them into something excel can read something that we can get so we're going to use it called a text aggregator right so we need to aggregate them so we're going to go in here we're going to look for that here actually it's right here and we're going to go inside this looking for table a table aggregator here table is sufficient. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for something called a text aggregator. So we're going to look in here and we're going to go down to text aggregator. That's the one I want. Text aggregator. So now basically it's going to aggregate all the information on those line items. And so we're going to click on here. 
And what type do I want? What is the source module? Well, we're going to click iterator three. That's the one we're going to get our information from here. Now, what is it that we want? I want a lot of information here. So I want, I'm going to look in here, all those information. I want the SKU number. So I'm going to click SKU. I want that first. And now I want to separate. I want to separate these items, but I want to use a different separator than I used before. So maybe something like item column. So we're going to use forward IC forward slash. So that's going to separate. It's going to differentiate between that, those types. So now what else do I want? I want the item name. So I'm going to click item name here. And then another, let me just copy that IC. I'm just going to keep using that a few times. So after that, right, after the item name, I also want to know what is the quantity, how many quantities were used. So we're going to click on this quantity right here. Okay, once we have the quantity, I also want to know the price. So we're going to click on the price here, which is the last one here. And lastly, another separator, and I want to know the total. So the total, and clicking OK. But before we do that, I also want to separate the rows, right? I want a row separator. That's really important because if we're going to be separating those rows, I want to know something. So we're going to click Other, and I want a new separator. We're going to use this IR, item row. Item row is going to be our separator. That's going to separate those individual rows, right? If we have 10 different items, I want to separate them. This is going to be our row separator, okay? This here is our column separator, item column and item row. Now we're going to click OK. So that's going to bring all the information into. So now let's continue it. So now we have all this information, but we don't have the order items yet. That order items is going to come from that text aggregator we just created here and click OK. So now we've got the text aggregator. It's going to put all that into the variable called text and click OK. All right, very good. So we have it. We can align things nicely. Going to saving our work. Okay. And now what we're going to do is make sure that we have, of course, all this. We want all of them. We're going to click Run Once. Now it'll probably just run a little bit and then stop, which is OK. That's what we want. OK, so that's everything's set up. Run Once. So now what I want to do is I want to create a scenario where it's going to keep running and looking for new orders, but there's no new orders. So why don't we create a new order and test that out? So we're going to go into WooCommerce here. Let's go back into, we'll visit the site of our brand new website. We'll go into all products and we'll just start clicking on some products and just order a few products. I'll take a few of these nice coffee machines and I'll do five of those. And then I'll add, I'm going to add two or three different items because I want to make sure. Then let's go ahead and add this coffee machine and one of those. And uh, let's go ahead and add some coffee on here too. So can't have we can't have coffee machines without actually good coffee so let's this is good coffee and we'll choose 10 bags of those so now we've got our order we can skip right to the order right all i need to do is click on here and check out so we've here's our order summary here click checkout okay we can add our name Fried has already been kept so we can just change that name to hamlin all right and then frank okay we're good to go there and then we're going to place the order here so once we've placed the order Right. We're going to go back into the WooCommerce. It's already been placed. And I'm going to click Run Once. And now it's going to, any orders that we've created, even if we've created 100 orders, are all going to come through. I'm going to click Run Once. And we're going to watch it come through. Okay, the first one's going to come through, come through, come through. Cool. It looks very good. Everything looked like it won. We got our information our, that came through. I like it. Looks good. So let's take a look inside our text file, the Dropbox file. Take a look inside. What is the order number here? I've got the email. 5106 is our order number here. Taking a look at this, 5106. Let's see that text file that got created. I'm going to drag that over. Everything got here. Our order number here. Our date is here, right? Our name is here. Our address, our city, our state, our email, our total is here. Our separator of the invoices here, our invoice items here, order items. Then we have each individual ID, right? We have the name, coffee filter machine, right? We have the quantity, the price, and the total. And it's going to loop through everything. Great. So now all I need to do, so now we've got that information in that folder. Now all I need to do, 5106 is the number we just ordered. Now all I need to do is run a macro inside our orders, clicking update orders. We're going to have two orders that have been updated. If we remember correctly, we see it's 5106. Now all I need to do is with a macro, 5106, into that. And we see that we now have that order in here. And all of everything's been updated. Wow, very cool. Okay, great. So far, where are we at? We created a brand new website. We've automated the orders into Excel. We've automated that into the 
text file. Now the text file is gone. Now let's go over some of the ma this macro that I just used to bring that information over. We saw how we got those text files. They're gone now. They've been deleted. We don't need them anymore. But how do we get that information in? So if we take a look inside the custom orders, if we go to the end, we see 5106. Here's the order information here. Oh, I see we forgot to add in pay type. So let's add that in right now. Okay, so here's our array. Here's our Dropbox right we want right pay type right after the email we have to have pay type so let's put that in here go down here and take a look at pay type i want to make sure the payment method here cod right and then another right c there we go okay so now we've got that perfect looking good all right so then our total all right click okay on that and make sure we save those changes we can close this out now so now everything's good we'll just fix that data but i think we'll do one more order just to make sure and copy those and paste those values here and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put in COD here. And we're gonna do one more check just to make sure everything is working right. All we need to do, and then don't forget, right? We're gonna turn on our scenario, make sure it works. It's gonna work every 15 minutes. We're gonna click activate it. For the free version, it's every 15 minutes. I'm gonna do one more order just to make sure everything's working out. Okay, clicking on another, let's click on this coffee comment, add those to cart. And then we'll add one more item to making sure everything is working perfectly. If you are checking every 15 minutes, but you want to do it a little bit quicker, all you need to do is just click run now, even if it's on. So all we need to do is click check out here. We'll keep the billing information the same, place the order. Good. So now it's been done. WooCommerce, click on run once. Okay, it's going to run that scenario. We're going to watch it come through, making sure all the data happens there. There it comes through. Okay, making sure that we have our, there it is, our folder just happened there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run that macro one more time, making sure that everything looks good. Update that order. One order has been added. Customer order here. Now we have, right, our brand new order here, 5107. We've got our total. Our order items are in here. You heard that email just came through. That's the order confirmation there. And we have everything here, including that. All right, excellent. That's working really well. Okay, great. Now let's get into exactly how we're able to create this incredible automation and bring that information directly into Excel on a single click. Or in fact, if you want to add this macro to the workbook open, it'll be automatic. You could even create events where you could create this automatically every 10 or 15 minutes so that you have a fully updated Excel with website data uh, completely hands-free. That can be done as well. All right, so let's get into the macro that makes this all happen. But before we do that, I'm going to create just one sample order. I've got something here, David Davis. He's got two automatic coffee machines and two Johnson Commercial Brewers. So I'm just going to place that order and then we're gonna have some sample data to work with. That's gonna automatically come into. Great, so once we have that, we'll go ahead and run our scenario here. That's gonna bring in the data and then we'll have everything we need. As that continues on, we're gonna bring, that's gonna be brought into Dropbox. You'll see it appear just a, in a second. And there it is, there's our data. Okay, so we have some data to work with. So now remember the idea, the first part is what we wanna do is we wanna separate that data. Basically, we wanna separate the main from the uh, table data, and then we want to put that in different data space. So inside our Excel, we want to make sure that we have our main order information come here, and then our items come here. Okay, so that's the idea, and we want to loop through, we want to create a macro that we're going to loop through every single text file inside that folder. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so that's going to happen when we press this button here, update orders. There's a macro that's tied to that. If we click assign macro, we see that there's a macro called check for new order data. Okay, when we edit that, it's going to take us directly inside our VBA controller, right? We have a few different modules here. We've got order data macros, we've got order macros, and we've got some application macros. The application macros all we're doing is browsing for the data folder and the picture folder that's just the two macros that we've assigned to these two buttons we really don't need the picture folder that might come in handy in the future really we need the data folder that's pretty much it so not much going on there inside the macro that i really want to focus on right now it's called check for new order data right? so we want to go through that we've got to mention a bunch of variables and i'll go through those as we as we're going to be creating some arrays and i'll go through these variables as they come across okay as so we've got a string variable called order folder right if we have to have a specific folder for that's been assigned to that data without this particular folder here it's called data folder is in named range if we don't have that then we can't continue right that's the only folder where they're going to con contain those text files so we've got to make sure that that's mapped out 
we also have to make sure that that is an accurate folder. So first we're going to check to make sure it's an accurate folder. If for some reason this string is empty or the directory of that order folder is empty, meaning it is an inaccurate path, then we need to let the user know it through a message box to please make sure to browse for a correct folder. Then what we're going to do is we're going to run that macro. That's the macro that's going to browse for their folder for them. After they do that, we're going to make one more check. If that folder is still empty or if the directory is still incorrect, then we're going to exit the sub. Without that correct folder, there's nothing else we can do. And so we're going to exit on the second attempt if the path is still incorrect or if they've left it blank. Okay, once we do have a correct folder, we know we have the direct folder, we're going to focus pretty much to begin with on our customer orders, right? That's what I want to focus on. That is exactly where we're going to add that information. Customer orders is this particular screen right here where we're going to add in. We want to find the first available row and add in all that information. But first, we need to loop through all of the files in that folder pulling out the text. So we're going to do that. We're going to set that file name based on that order folder and any particular file using this asterisk wildcard that ends in .txt. So we want to loop through those. So the first thing before we set our loop, we're going to set our file name. And then we're going to have a use a do while loop. That is going to be the length of the file name is greater than zero. This is the beginning of our loop as we loop through every single file inside that folder. Okay, We're going to set that date of file path. That's the full file path. It's going to be basically that folder right, along with that backslash along with the file name. So that's going to complete the file path of that text file. And then we want to open that. It happens very, very fast. Open that data file path for input as number one. And that's the first input line, right? So what I want to do is I want to take all of that text inside that line one, and I'll put it into a variable called order data. This is a text variable. It's a string variable, right? With all that text. And then all we do is just want to close that. Once we, we close that file, so there's no need, we don't need it open because we've taken all the data from that file and put it in this variable. Once it's in that variable, we can then work with it. And then I want to separate that data. Let's take a look at that sample, that one that we just created. I'm going to open this up. And it's going to pull up a text file. Then I want to, let's see, we don't need that. I want to separate this. Basically, what I want to do is I want to separate the first part, the main part, from the second part of the table. And remember, we created this variable, order items. Take a look at this one. Let's expand that a little bit. Something called order items. This particular delimiter called order items is going to separate our main order information here from all of our table, all of our item information here. So I want to separate this into two different screens using this as a delimiter and using the split function. So that's just what we're going to do right here. We are going to set our order data. Order data is the array. This is going to be an array we're creating. And order data is as an array up here, as a string array. OK, so then what we're going to do is we're going to split it based on that text order item or ORD items. That's the one. We're going to split the string based on the main order details and the order items. So that's going to split it into two parts. Once it's in those two parts, I can assign a variable to each one of those parts. And once we have it into that array, we can then separate it into two different variables. right? If it's in an array, our first item, the first number, is our first part. One is our second part. In an array, zero is always the first. One is always the second. So we can put that into another string. The main order data is going to be that order data array 0. That's going to be our main order. And then all of the items information is going to be in something called order item data. So we've separated the top and the bottom portion. Just to take a quick look here, now we've separated it here. So on here, here's our order items, here's our separator. This is all in one string now. And we have everything else in another string. So that's all. So now we've got two separate strings. Now we can work with it, getting that in the correct item databases in the tables inside Excel. So now that we have that both there, so we can then move on. So we now I want to take that main order data, and I want to split that based on the delimiters. Remember, inside our, we created delimiters, forward slash C, forward slash, right in here. And so I want to then separate it based on these, right? I want that order number. I want that date, the name, the address, and so on and so on. And I want to split that using our delimiter that we set up. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a split, another array called main order array. We're going to split it based on the delimiter forward slash C forward slash. So that's going to be our main order data. Then I also want to split our 
order item data, right? The data in our order, and I want to split that by our delimiter inside our unit. So that was called IR, remember that? So I want to split, uh, these are the number of rows. So I want to know how many rows, right? We have one row here, then we have IR, right? Item row, then we have another one, right? IR, so I want to then split it so that we have two different, one for each rows. So this is going to determine the number of rows. Split order items data by row so that's so now we in this particular case we would have two different ones so two different ones okay great so now we have all that set up into string variables and we can get ready to adding our main order item data so all the main order data so the first thing we want to do is we want to of course determine the first available row and i wanted to determine the order id just in case that order id already exists in case it's an updated i wanted to put that order id inside a variable so the best way to do that is to put it in and we know that the first item is our order id the first item inside our text string is also an order id so if we look inside here we see that our text string right here our first item here is 5108 that is our order id so in an array it is that zero item so we're going to put that inside a variable our order id our string variable is the main order array zero we're going to extract that order item id that order actually it's order let's put order id we're going to extract that order id now i do want to check to see if it exists now i've got a named range already set up here so if we go into the formulas and a name manager and we take a look we set something we see something called order id and that's a dynamic named range based on order, all the order ids just in case that order id exists if that order id already exists maybe it's been an updated order or maybe it's a refund or something like that we want to update that. So in that case, I want to know what row it's on, just in case it's found. But usually these are only for new orders, so it's always good, but just good to double check. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to set that order row, and if it's found, it, it will be found, and we're going to extract it. But if it's not found, it will create an order using the find function. So we want to wrap that in on air, resume next, and on air go to zero. Where are we going to look? We're going to look that based on our customer orders, we're going to look in the order ID, that named range. We're going to find it. We're going to base it on the existing order ID, right? That order ID. We're looking for it in the values and whole numbers. And we want to extract the row. If it's found, then we have a row. If it's not, then we need to add a new row. So if the order row equals zero, that means it was not found. Only then do we want to set the new row based on the first available row using the last row of data based on that table plus the first available row, plus one. That's the first available row. So now we have an order row, whether it's an existing or whether it's new, and then we're ready to go. So now what I want to do is I want to run a loop through all the columns. How are we going to do that? Well, the best way to do that is simply to run a loop from all the way from one to 10. Why is 10? We've got 10 rows. If I put a column here, I've got 10 different columns, right? So if I've got 10 different columns, I want to run a loop from column one to column 10. I already know the row. And we're just simply going to add that data inside using that text string going through that array. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. So for the order column equals 1 through 10. Now we're going to set the cells, the order row, the order column. That value is equal to the main order array and the order column minus 1. Why are we subtracting 1? Because inside an array, our first value is always 0, item 0. So we need to say our first value is item 0, but our first column is column 1. So order column minus 1 is 0 for the first one, and that's what we want. Add the main order data to the database. So this loop will add all the items to that order. Great, so we're done adding that. So now we want to add in the table data, right? So now we're, ready, now we're ready to use this array, right? We've already determined how many rows, right, using that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run a loop through all the rows, and then once we're inside the rows, we're going to run a loop through every column inside the row. First thing I want to do is find the first available order item row inside our database. So now we're focused on order items. That first available row, order items, of course, is that order item right here. We're focused on this one. So I want to look for the first available row here. Now we're going to add all the order data here. Okay, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to set that row. And I also want to set the order item row to 9. What is that? The order item row is just a variable that we're going to add here. I should freeze these columns. I always like to do that, freeze the rows here. So let's go ahead and do that into the view. Then we're going to freeze these columns. So we can do that by clicking here and then freeze the panes. Okay, so that's going to freeze them now. So now what we can see is down at the bottom here, we want to make sure that we're adding all of this data in. And we're going to add it in through columns, right? So this time we're going to rope, but we're going to run that loop through the column, this time 
nine columns. So nine columns, one through nine, adding all that data in here. And then, but there's some data that's not here, like this one, we're gonna be adding that, right? Because this doesn't come, right? This did not come inside our data, the category, or the order row, but I wanna add that order row in, nine, 10, 11. That order row corresponds to this row inside the order. The first one's gonna be nine, second one's gonna be 10, 11. It's gonna go on so that when we decide we wanna load this order up, we have an appropriate row to load. The first item is always going to be nine. Then we're just going to increment the row by one. So that's why we always want to track the order row. Notice this order, 5190, has a single. This one has two items, so we have nine and 10. Okay, so that's the order item row right here, setting the initial order at nine. Okay, so now what we're going to loop, we need to loop through all the order items. I need to know how many items, how many rows are there, right? So I need to determine how many times IR was in there, right, for every new row. So what we're going to do, one way to do it is just simply run a loop from the lowest part to the upper part of the bound. The lower bound, which is the lower bound, the bottom to the top, right? So running a loop, the upper bound means the top. In this case, it would be one, and this would be zero, because we only have two items, right? Two rows. So if we run a loop, this is going to allow us to basically run a loop through every single item in that. All right, we're going to set that row data. I want to know the data of that row. Row data is going to be, remember this, if it's two rows, it's going to be split into two parts. What is that first part? It's all of that data. What is that first part? Inside here, our first part would look something like this, right? Here's our order items. Our first part would look something like here until IR, right? So until IR, this is our first part. We have our order item ID, we have our name, we have our quantity, we have our price at 150, and we have our total at 300. Okay, so that's our first order item. So we're going to put that inside a variable, right? Then we're gonna be able to split it based on the IC, the columns. So that's what we need to do right here. So row data is gonna be that one. So it's gonna go from zero to one, two, three, however many rows there are. Once I have that, all that row data in a single row, I wanna split that based on the number of columns. Remember it's IC, our delimiter's IC, item column. So we're gonna split that into an array. And then once again, we're gonna be able to loop through that, right? If for some reason the row data is empty, then we're gonna to go to the next file, right? We don't, we need to have the first part of it. I wanna make sure that there is a value there. If not, we're gonna skip. Assuming that there is a value, we're gonna set that order ID. We've already put that into a variable right here. So I want that to be first part in. So that means that order ID is gonna go right here in column A. I also want the order date to go in B, right? That order date is very important. And I wanna make sure that we're setting that up. That order date's gonna go there. That's gonna come automatically based on the order date. That's gonna come in column B. Now order date was set all the way up here, right here, order date was gonna be the second value in that. The order date, the second value, the first is that order ID. Second, I can put those, let's put those together. Makes a little more sense, okay? bring them, setting our variables right away, I like that better, in the same spot. Okay, so setting our order date and order ID there. All right, so that's gonna be the first two, just so we know our order ID is the first item, our order date is the second item here. Once we have those, we're gonna put those in columns A and B of our items right here. Next, we're gonna loop from three to seven, looping from three to seven, why? One and two columns have already been done, three all the way through seven, this one's gonna be a variable and this one's gonna be a variable, right? So these are, so only this data is gonna come in from three to seven, the product ID, the product quantity, amount, and total. So only those items, three, column three, two, column seven. So that's what we're gonna do inside the VBA. So we're gonna set the order items, that's the database, the order item database row, the order item column, that value equals the row data. Again, once again, we have to subtract out because our first item is zero, right? Our first variable, value that we want is zero. So to get zero, if our order column is three, and I want to get zero, one, two, I need to make sure that this is zero. To do that, I'm going to subtract three. That's going to get our first item in the array. Then one's going to be our second, two's going to be our third, and so on and so forth. So we're going to loop through that. That's simply going to place this data directly inside this table from three. Next up, I want to put H and I in there. I want to get that category and I want to place the order row. So the order row is simply the next one of it. So the order row H item, H 
is the order item row. We're simply going to increment this up for every single one. But now what I want to do is I want to get that category. Now that category did not come inside the information, right? There was no category. Let's take a quick look. There's no category here. If I pull up and extract that information here, right? There's no category here. I can't find it under the items, right? If we take a look at the line items here, these are the line items. There's no item that came in here, right? There's no category, item category here. But that's okay because we've got the category stored in our database. We know we've got the inside our products, I've got the category located right here. If I know the product ID, which I do, I can extract the category of it very simply. And I do know the product ID. How do I know that product ID? Because that product ID is coming the first item, product ID 10023, or after the new line and RR, we're going to see that right here, the product ID right here. So these product, if I've got the product ID, I can extract the product category and that's what we're going to do right here so the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to put that product id into a string variable and again it's going to be the first one inside a row data array that's going to set the product id once i have the product id another find to get extract that product category so that's what we're going to do inside the products i've got a name range called product id it's a dynamic name range we're going to find that product id make sure that these variables are different product name range and these should be different okay we're going to look in the values and hold. We want to extract that row. If that row is found, then I know exactly what that product category is, right? I know that that category is in column D and whatever row it's been found on. So if the product row does not equal zero, then the order items I, right, we're looking for, we're going to place, that's what we're going to place directly inside it. We're going to place it directly in column I and the row item row value so this is where it's going to go it's going to come directly from products column d in the product row this is going to set our category make sure if it's not found it's going to create an error so we want to always wrap it in on air resume next and on error go to zero great so now what i want to do is i want to increment two variables the order item database row that's the database and the order item row those two things are here the order database row and also i want to increment here another one remember it's going from nine to ten unless we have a brand new order then it's going to go back to nine okay so great so we've incremented those two items and now we're going to go to the next order item row now we also want to increment the order row, right, as we loop. So this is everything for, for the existing order. Now we want to increase the order row one more. Why is that? Because that's going to increment this order row. Okay, that's it. So every time we need to increase another order row, right, we want to go this row and this row so we, as we add in the order rows, right? Because we may be having multiple orders that come through at the same time, which is just fine. Okay, we're going to kill the file name, right, Clear, clears out the current file name, kill the data path, and the order count, I want to count how many orders have come through. So we're going to keep a count. The order count equals the order count plus one. That we saw that message box that you saw, it says the order count equals the orders have been added, right? So when we run this macro, let's get rid of this now, notice this file. Notice this file is right here, but as soon as we run that macro, it's going to be gone and that information is going to be added. So all we need to do is click here, one order have been added, added customer orders it's now here 5108 the two order items here 5108 have been added here and we've got a brand new order and you see that the text file has now been deleted and gone great so that is exactly how we get in all of the data here inside this so very very easily we've created the website right we've shown you how we can bring data in and how we can put that data directly in the correct tables now what we're going to do is we're going to show you how we created this incredible dashboard using some pivot data slicers all right cool thanks let's get to that so first thing we've done is we've certainly created some tables that's very important for you if we take a look at this we see the table design i've created a table called product sales this is the primary one we're going to be fo focusing on i want to create pivot tables based on this table here because we've got all the data i've got order data product and everything in here and i've got a sheet called pivot data so we've created some pivot tables that are going to help us in the first of course if you want to create a pivot table all you would do is just click insert there's a few ways to do it pivot table and then we say where do we want so we can do a new worksheet or an existing if we do a new worksheet right we can said click OK, and that's going to add this to the new worksheet, right? And that's just what I did over here. So inside our pivot data, let's bring it over here. Inside our pivot data, here's our sample data that we're going to be working with. And we've got our pivot data, our actual data that we're going to be working with, right? So I wanted to create a pivot chart, but this one I want to create our first one. If we take a look in the analyze the pivot data, we said we got something called products that we want. I want to know all the products by how many based on an order date, right? So if we take a look inside 
our dashboard up here, we see that we've got a number of products, top sales by product and category, right? Well, that's very cool. I want to know all of the products by category and subcategory, and I want to sort them based on that category, and I want them listed here in this bar chart. So how are we going to do that? Well, again, all we want to do is, of course, we want to know the rows. I want the products on the rows. So we got all of our products, okay? So putting the products in the rows. I also want to know the total sales. So we're going to total the values, okay? So now we've got totals. But I also want to know the categories, right? And so we're also going to add in categories because we always want them. And so bringing in the category here. Okay, so now we see we've got categories and we know how much, but we also maybe want to filter by date. That's important. So we can click order date and create a filter based on that date. Great. Now we've got our data here, but now let's, what we're going to do is we want to insert right a maybe perhaps a bar chart now bar charts are really good for this we've got bar charts we've got lots of different charts that we can do but the best thing to do is probably a bar chart on here because we've got long names right so that's going to help us there so inserting a bar chart could help us a clustered bar chart a regular bar chart we've got a lot to choose from here a 2d bar chart should work just fine for our purposes because i want a nice and long so we're going to bring it up here bring that down here Okay, so now we're getting to see. Now we don't need to see all these bars, so I'm going to right click there. I'm going to hide all the field and buttons on the chart. Okay, and we also don't need, we don't need a legend, so we can delete that. Another way to do it is just click on here. We can also show up. So we want to see different information. Okay, so we have our pivot data. We can bring this here. And also, we want, if we want to customize it, right, we can show chart title if we want. I'll bring that up grid lines if we want. So this is basically it. That's relatively simple. You see how I've done that? And also, we're going to be creating slicers. So, and then all we need to do is just move or copy that. So, we can just move the chart and move it to the dashboard. And that's exactly what I've done here. So, it's pretty much it. There's no difference between this one and we're using and the one I just created. So, the, this one's a very, very simple. Just set, put some separators, right? I, if you see down here, I've just got some separators here that are going to help us with that chart. Um, based on 20,000. So just keep it a nice large format there. So if we want to right click and we want to format that axis, we can see that we have our major units are just 20,000. So keeping them nice and large. Okay, but as you can see here, we've got order date, the filters, access our categories and products, right? And now what we want to do is we want to sort them, right? So let's say we want to sort them. All we need to do is just sort, right, from A to Z, or in this case, what we want to do is I want to sort the variables. So the, these sum totals, that's what I want to be sorting on. So if we want to do that, all we need to do is just sort by largest to smallest, right? And that's going to create a bit. Or in this case, you notice that there's opposite. So if we do the opposite, right, it'll show up. I know it's kind of counterintuitive, but we can do that, sort, and then largest to smaller, or smallest to largest, that's going to be the opposite. So that's exactly what I did, created that sort, and then just brought it over into that. So that covers our first chart, and that's how, and then just given a title called top sales by category. Okay, so that covers our first one. How about our next one? Well, let's take a look inside the pivot data, and I've created another one here. This is our first one, right? Taking a look at this. We've given this a name here called product, right? And then this one here, I've got another one. This one we're calling based on the order date, right? So I want to know based on the order date. All of the information here, Tom, based on, I want to know all of the particular totals based on the product category based on a specific month, right? Or in a year. So we're going to be basically on, I want all the total products by category and by date. So how are we going to do that? Again, just another pivot data. And we're going to base on category, right? I want the columns based on category this time. So we're, right, we're bringing that. And I want the rows based on years and the order date. So that way we can easily shrink based on the years, right? That's going to be very, very helpful. And I want the values. I want to total up all the values. So that's how we get the total sales based on that data. Okay. And then to get that, that's how we do it. Then we just create a chart based on that. And so to do that, we just insert a line chart, right? This is just a basic line chart. So we insert a line chart, something like this, right? And that's how, exactly how we're going to get it. So if I bring it over here and bring it over here, you get an idea of what we have, just very similar to the other things. Again, removing the fields and buttons, we don't need that. And I have a single legend. If you notice, I have a single legend up at the top, and that avoids me putting legends on all because all the colors are consistent. So that's, let's, let's do that so we can see that. So we got that. So we can remove the legend. So if I were to remove the legend, right, you can do that through here, just showing the legend. We don't need to see the legend. We can remove the grid lines if we want to. Then we can spread that out a little bit. 
And that's pretty much how we did the same thing over here on the dashboard. There's no, not much different, given it a title, monthly sales. Relatively simple, the colors are automatic. So, okay, so we've gone over our bar chart here, we've gone over our line chart on our total monthly sales by category here, based on that, each one of them. We've got our legend all the way up to the top here. Okay, but I also wanna know some more things, right? So let's take a look from left to right. We can delete this now. We've shown you how to create that. Okay, and let's take a look in here. I also want to create some information based on this. If we take a look at our pivot table, we see that we've given it a name of, take a look at this, this is called total dollars by category, total dollars by category. And what I'm gonna do is I've created three donut charts based on this data, right? Three different donut charts. So if we take a look at this, clicking insert, you wanna insert a donut chart, that's what I'm going to do. I want to send three. But then what I want to do is basically I want to duplicate this and I want to create one for every single category. To do that, all I want to do, let's say I want to create one just for our machines, which is the blue one. I want to basically take this one and then just fill it with a shape fill of no fill, right? So I want to do no fill on this one. And of course, add a border on that so we can see that. And then no no fill on this one and then also on all of it just simply adding a border okay so you select here right and once we see all the borders i'm going to format that then what we'll do is we want the shape outline right give it a color maybe this color here and then what we're going to do is give it a weight you know and we give it some dashes here so like let's see this dashes here so now we can see we've got some dashes around there so that gives us an idea of what we want to see just as we did before and so now we can add a pictures and some add total so let's go from here all the way to our dashboard and we can see kind of how we started to create those then what i want to do is just create of course we have to have inside we have to have our chart title here we've given it a total coffee so we've basically duplicated the same chart but yet we've made different parts transparent this one i've made of course our sales coffee and our coffee accessories transparent this one i've made our coffee and coffee machines transparent and this one the other two i've added a picture of coffee just as we did before adding those pictures denoting those particular categories and then i just did a linked text box on one of those totals so i got a link to those particular totals so i've created a text box and then i've linked it you can see this is linked to k6 this is linked to K5, and this is linked to K4. So we go into the pivot data, and we take a look inside that. We see K4, K5, and K6. So we've linked to those totals. Great, so that's it. That's how we created all three of these. Now I have another one I wanna show that percentage, right? So I've created another pivot table, this time the sum of the total. Here in this pivot, we're showing the sum of the totals. Here we're showing the percentages. So show values, let's kind of bit off the screen, let's slide that over a little bit. This one I want to do show values as percentage of grand total. This one simply showing values as a number, no calculations, because we're just showing the totals, right? So inside our pivot charts here, we put them on here. We can see that inside that we're both totaling the totals. They're both the same, right? We have the sum of the total, except we're showing it in percentage format, right? Basically showing values as percentage of grand total. But this one, I want to create a pie chart based on that. So if I select that and we insert a pie chart based on that, just a basic pie chart. We see that we have just a simple pie chart, and then we're just gonna add our data labels here, just as we add the data labels, and then we're gonna show them. So if we wanna add the data labels, but I wanna add them inside or outside, of course, we can do that. We can format those data labels, and maybe we want to show them on the outside, so we can show them, or we want to show them as a percentage, we have a lot of options here. And what we can do, I think I did the outside end, but I also want to show them, we could add a different shape. So we can show them by shape, so we can show them here, and we can put boards around it. So lots of things that we can do and add in the title. That is all I did, relatively simple on this pie chart. So this dashboard, just a simple pie chart, sales percentage, by category very good we also have another one called annual sales by category this one's relatively easy back inside our pivot data if we scroll down here i've got another pivot chart here and this one's of course going to be based on some information that we have all i want to do is in the columns here i want to show the category columns or category the rows are going to be years because i want those individual years to show here then I want to sum by total. So this is how we get this table very, very simply here. And then all we're going to be doing is creating a bar chart based on that. So this, I'm just a basic bar chart here. And then we're gonna do that. Actually, we wanna do insert. Insert's the basic bar chart, this one here, right? We wanna do this type, right? A clustered column here. 
And then all we have to do, our colors are automatic. Just do that, we simply remove, of course, all the buttons in the chart here. We don't need the legend here, so we can easily remove the legend, clicking here to delete, or of course we can also click here to show that, and then we just add that and just unselect the legend and the grid lines. And that's how we're going to get that. So all I did was just bring that into the dashboard. You just simply move it, and we're gonna move the chart to the dashboard. So it's inside the dashboard. Once it's inside the dashboard, all we need to do is just place it accordingly, and then just size it up accordingly. And then just make sure that we add that title, annual sales by category. Great. Lastly on this, before we get to our slicers, is we have our sales by category three-year trend. I wanna show the three-year trend. So we're gonna link up to additional data. So I've created additional pivot data in here. In fact, I've created three different ones. They're all the same except they're filtered differently, right? So what, what I've done is I've created three different pivot charts, except each one of them has a different filter. This one's 2022, this one's 2021, and this one's 2020. So if we take a look inside the pivot here, we can see that we have very, very simple, basic things. So we're going to filter by the years. I want to filter, so I've taken the years and dragged down here. I want to show the years. I want the columns to be order date, grouped by months here. And I want the rows to be the category. I want to show, remember, those three rows to category. And I want the totals by sum. So that's all we've done there. And then each one I've given it a filter, right? We're filtering by years. I only want to show one single. I only want to show 2022. I've duplicated that pivot. I only want to show 2021 and I only want to show 2020 in this case. So we've going to simply to get those labels, all we're going to do is just link. So inside the dashboard, all I'm going to do is link this to J14, this cell, J15 and J16. So that's all we had to do inside this, just linking it up to these three items here. Once we have that, I also want to show, use some conditional formatting to show this bar chart. Here we go. So here I want to show all years, right? And I also want to provide, so how do we get to the number? And all we need to do is simply total the coffee on all the years. One way to do that is just simply go ahead. We could create another pivot, but I just simply added this. All we need to do is close this out and bring this over here a little bit. All I need to do is just for coffee, total this plus this plus this. Now these are not going to be linked to our slicers so that we're always going to show those particular years, right? So I do want to show, so simply this item plus this item. And then for the coffee accessories, just totaling this W15 plus W24 plus W33. It's just going to total those up. That's how we're going to get the total here. So we've got our totals, all the years of totals right here. Then all I want to do is use some conditional formatting and we're going to use some basically data bars. So we've created some data bars here to reflect that. And all we did was just from D18 to D20 and just created a data bar, some basic data bar, just set it at automatic and we set the color there. That's it. That's all we had to do. Just relatively simple for our data about now what we want to do is we want to create some spark lines right so to create a spark line all you want to do is just click insert here and then just click spark line and then what we want to do is you want to select the data for that spark line so if we go inside inside the spark line we want to know what data was selected and we take a look at the spark line data we want to see where the data is coming from so we go into the spark line we edit the data and we edit the single spark line data and we see that that's going to be coming from year 2022 Right? And it's going to be coming from K14 through V14. So we see that here on this row. Right? And likewise, everything else is pretty much the same. So if we look into the next one, we see the coffee accessories. Of course, we can assume that we see that that's going to be the next line down. Right, So the next line down from, in this case, K15 all the way through V15. So each one of those, and then of course the second one or the last one, we can go through the last one. We see that's basically on the last line of data. So we can edit the single line of data here, and we see that that's based on year 2020. So all we needed to do really was create the same pivot data and then just use a specific filter. So only right 2021 and only 2022. Okay, great. There we go. So that's it. That's all we had to do. And then just, of course, color our lines accordingly, to making sure that our spark line colors are color coordinated based on the particular category that they're sorted in. All right, great. So now what I have is I've got some data that I want to affect the slices. Now, obviously, I've got some data that are already this annual sales by category, right? We're showing all three years, so we don't need to sort by years or by data, right? But there is some data that we do want to have some slices on that we wanted to affect at. Right, so we maybe we only want to show certain months here, and we want some slicers to affect that. So how, or maybe we only want to show certain categories, or maybe we only want to show certain items or certain products. 
right? So we can do all of that with these slicers. So if we want to insert a slicer, of course, all we need to do is just let's say we select on there and we can insert and then we just select slicer. So once we have our slicer here, we want to select what are we going to be slicing out, right? So we have, in this case, we're going to have uh, machines, right? So we've got categories and we've got product IDs and product names. So we're going to select that and we can just show what do we want. But here we want years, so we're going to select years. Let's say for the first one, we want to create a year. Now we've got years, but you see this is horizontal. So we want a two column slicer. So we're going to add a column onto that. And then I'm just going to bring this down and shrink it like that. Now we also want it to connect to certain pivot tables and pivot charts, right? So if I right click here and I want to decide set on the slicer report connections, I want to know what report connections, right? Now I certain things, obviously I don't want it to connect to these 2020. These are very year specific. So these charts, but I do want it to next. So I want to connect it to the annual sales by category so I can set which type of pivot tables I want to select too. So I just need to select those. And I've done the same thing with each of those slicers, right? So we just simply select which reports we want to affect. Now we can do that because they're all based on the same data, right? All this pivot data is based on the same original data here. So it's no problem that we can have that individual slicers affect more than one. So that's all. And then, and if we see here, you see how this new one's also affecting that. And we just move it up and shrink it up. Okay, so that's all we need to do to create this slicer. Now we can do that for the same. We have also order dates, right? So if we want to create a slicer for order dates, we can base it on months, right? So we can do that too. And then of course, this can affect. So if we take a look inside this, we can also protect it, right? So you see that I can't right click on it and I've protected it. That's very good. That's exactly what you want. And so if I go into the slicer settings here and I go into the size and properties, we see that we have uh, inside our position and layout, we have disable resizing moving. So when I select that, we could then select that. So that's kind of a nice feature when we just select it because that way you cannot select. So if I select it and we can see that all the size and properties, right? So we can go to the report connections and we see that this has been connected to three different monthly sales by category, monthly sales by product, total amount by category and total percentage by category. So we can see that these are all affected by it. So when I make a change to there and I hold down the control, it's automatically affecting all of them. So very, very easy, just like that. If I want to clear the filter. So I've created these slicers for each one, one for category, one for products, and one for years. And we simply clear the filter. And that's going to affect just those reports that we want to and just those charts. All right, very, very cool. All right, so we've created this really, really cool, amazing application that automatically imports data from your website. Not only that, I've shown you how to create and how to create your own WordPress website complete with products and e-commerce website and automatically send that data through Integromat, through a process into your application and then parse that data, bring in that data here, all with a single click of a button. It has been an incredible training. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to click the likes, smash that, subscribe, put your comments down below. And of course, I've got some really incredible products for you. Don't forget to join our mentorship program. I've got an amazing dashboard course. And of course, I think you'll really love the mentorship, myexcelmentor.com. Join us there, some really great training, and you'll learn how to make your own Excel applications for passive income. All right, thanks so much, and we'll see you next week.